people, I have been collecting some randomly odd pieces the past couple months to decoupage. I want to give you some new ideas, and I thought, let's do as many as we can in one day. I grabbed several of these large cutting boards at Dollar Tree. They were only $3. They look amazing on their own, but we're gonna decoupage this one in a very unique way. Normally I'd paint over this gem and call it a day, but we're gonna actually sand off the design. That's right. This is going to just sand right on off of here. It's gonna take a little bit of elbow grease and it started making a bit of a mess. So, you know, I retreated to the patio. And just in case you're wondering, I'm using 120 grit. The lower grit on the sandpaper, the more coarse it is. The higher grit, the smoother it is. The more coarse it is, gives you the ability to really knock off any print like this. And people, since it was 120 grit, this was a little rough, you know what I'm saying? But I had to be careful because guess what? This is not solid wood. It's MDF, okay? Check out the back, all right? This is a huge indicator, not solid wood, just the top. So if we would have sanded it down too far, we wouldn't have that beautiful wood on there. And now to make it nice and smooth, I'm gonna take this 800 grit sandpaper and just wrap it around my little finger sander. And we're gonna go over this to make it smooth like butter for us to make a brand new DIY out of. We are finally at the good part. Sometimes prepping is like such a pain in the bootay. Oh, look at that, I forgot something. <laughs> and of course, I continue to forget the Dollar Tree has been stepping up their game with attaching things. So here I am because they have put these staples in this sucker trying to pry the <laughs> twine off of here by any means necessary. Those suckers were in there. But in all seriousness, it's a good thing that they're, you know, putting their stuff together better. Here is one of the beautiful napkins that we're gonna be using to decoupage onto this piece. And one thing I really love about this napkin is each square has a different design on the background. It's like the same front background, you feel me? But the back has a different design. And since I'm asked constantly about layering and matching napkins, this is the second napkin we're gonna use on here. We're going to tear both of these apart, put them together on our beautiful cotton board. And this napkin has the same exact design on four squares. To get us started, we are going to tear a little corner here to reveal the sneaky layers and rip them suckers right on off. So we just have our top decorative layer. And then we are going to use a little bit of water on a paintbrush to really give us a nice specific design. You can tear your napkin, I love doing that as well. But whenever you're doing details and you're using things like tissue paper or a napkin, since they're super thin, water can help guide you to get a precise design. Just make sure when you're using a napkin specifically, you wait for the ends to dry that you have water on. If you do not, while you're trying to apply that with the Mod Podge or whatever you're using as your medium, it's possible that a sucker is gonna rip or cause issues. So, you know, wait 10, 15 minutes, make sure all your little edges are dry from the water. To apply our napkins, we're gonna use some cling wrap. And this is just the Great Value brand. It's a knockoff. It isn't even the actual name brands. And we're gonna be using some sponges. I use these all the time and get asked all the time, what sponges do I use? These, these exact ones. And we don't even need a whole sponge because it's been my experience that if I use the whole sponge, it actually gets in the way. So I'll cut them in half and just use half the sponge. And people, a little tip, after about seven to 10 uses, this is gonna get a little crusty musty. I will cut these up so I can use them for stencils and textured effects. Just a little tip, you know, waste not, want not. And we are gonna be using some Mod Podge and fan brush, fan brush to apply our napkin. It's my favorite thing to actually use as an applicator whenever I'm doing napkin decoupage DIYs. There are a lot of ways you can create decoupage art. And as a crafter, a DIYer, or an artist, I like to believe that we all find what works for us through one means or another, whether it's school, a knack for it, YouTube. And really, I truly believe that there's no right or wrong way to go about it. Just create something that you love and as long as it makes you happy, that's all that matters. It doesn't have to be perfect. Whenever it comes to decoupage, I like to believe less is more because napkins are super easy to destroy, super easy. 
So usually I will place my napkin down in one section and I'll either start at the top, the bottom, the side, the middle, whatever works for me at that time, depending on the project. And I will go little by little, section by section, applying a small amount of Mod Podge, using my sponge to press it down because the Mod Podge seeps up through the napkin. The sponge, since it's dry, it's grabbing that. And then you can take your cling wrap and go over it, smoothing it out. And before I get the iron on method people of the world talking about how that is the best way to get the most wrinkle free application, you are so right. It absolutely is. But I talk about this a lot in my content. Doing it this way is quickest for me because I have to make content for you. The iron on method requires drying and waiting and waiting. With this, since I'm applying such a thin layer, it dries really quickly and I can continue making whatever I'm DIYing. There are a couple ways you can go about layering napkins. For this particular project, I really wanted that cascade of hydrangeas that is going upwards to kind of meet right underneath of our little yellow Tweety Bird that we have up here. So I just took some more water on a little paintbrush and just kind of trimmed it in such a way that it blended together. Now you might be asking yourself, Brandy, why didn't you just paint the background and then apply your napkins? Well, there's a couple ways you can, like I said, decoupage. And I wanted the wood background to kind of blend into the napkins to make these look like they just went on the board. And keep in mind, whenever you're decoupaging a napkin or tissue paper and it's really thin, you can see whatever the background is. It'd be fairly translucent. So if you pick the color of your background that is sort of similar to your wood grain, it'll look really flawless. And um, <laughs> this goes without saying that if you iron it on, it's gonna be even more flawless, okay? <laughs> Once I was happy with the application of the napkins, I decided to take some more cling wrap and just kind of go over. There were some little sections where I got a little extra with the Mod Podge and really just wanted to kind of smoosh it out. And the cling wrap helps accomplish that. I let this dry for about 20 to 30 minutes, but if I'm recommending getting to the next part to you, I would say wait a couple hours. Okay, don't be a rebel like me, be patient. <laughs> it's not easy. We're now gonna take some of this distressing texture paste and put some stencils on here. But I also wanna add a little bit of color because I want everything to kind of match our napkins. So I'm taking a little, you know, bowl here and taking just a tiny bit with my tool. And you don't have to use one of these tools. I've showed it before. You can use a spoon, whatever. It doesn't have to be a fancy schmancy little plastic tool that costs like 99 cents from Ross in a little pack of like mixed things. Don't let me perpetrate like, um, you know, I'm not fancy y'all. I'm not, okay. <laughs> I'm wing it and get it done. Now, I just mixed some colors together until I got three that made sense to me with the napkin colors and that I felt I could also blend to get a little bit more colors. You wanna make sure that before you do anything like this, you want to try and tape it down. So I used some painter's tape and then held my pointer finger on my left hand at the top of where I wanted it to start and then worked my way down. And I used primarily this color and took some of the other colors and smooshed it in there to give us a little bit of variety. I felt like it matched the hydrangeas, it matched some of the red and the truck, or that's a truck, it's a car. <laughs> and it just kind of blended on down with our little stencil here. And ooh, look how pretty. And it dried like that, it really did. It dried like, well, you'll see in just a second. I decided to take some butterflies because we had some butterflies in one of our little napkins and I had different stencils with different butterflies and since I didn't want to put anything on the handle part I wanted to actually leave the handle as a whole I put them going up the handle in different colors And because I cannot leave well enough alone, I grabbed some stamps, some were Dollar Tree stamps, some were some off Amazon I had, and just put some in different little sections. Allow this to dry a day and then put whatever sealer you wanna put over this.
If you're looking for a super easy decoupage piece that you can kind of toss around your home, this is gonna get you right there. This is a little hanging live edge piece that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I love these things. And I'm just ripping the handle right off of there. Feel free to take the staples out. They are a pain in the bootay and for the sake of the video and my time, since I'm trying to get as many done as possible in one day, I'm leaving them. Look at this pretty napkin. It almost looks like it was meant to go on our little wood piece. I am not painting it because I feel like the napkin will blend right on into our wood and I am just tearing off right at the top where our butterflies are. I love the fact that there are three different sections of the napkin that have the same pattern on there. So I just took the center, I measured it on up and started right on in the center of our napkin and worked our way down one entire side. And it was at this moment that I realized something was off. Can anybody see it by looking at the video? Can you see it? Cause I can see it looking at the video. I couldn't see it in person but I noticed it as soon as the damage was done. I missed a sneaky layer. <laughs> I missed one. And I was like, shoulda, woulda, coulda at this point. I just started on the other side. So if anyone has ever forgot to take off a sneaky layer or missed one, here is a good project for you to look at. I did my best trying to make sure that the top decorative layer was getting attached to that Mod Podge underneath that sneaky layer. It's one of the reasons you want to just have the decorative layer so you don't have a loose layer on the top. So a good tip is to leave it alone, let it dry, go over it with a sealer on the top, let it dry again, and you should be okay. But it's always best to make sure you get all them sneaky layers. It still turned out super pretty. Say hello to my little garden gnome. Well, this sucker really is a little, it's kind of big. It's like, you know, over a foot. I picked this up from Aldi's for like eight bucks. I seen it, I was like, it has to come home with me. And it needs a base of some white everywhere we plan on decoupaging. This is gonna help the napkins that we're going to apply onto this for the designs to just pop out. While that's sitting off to the side drying, we're gonna take some clay molds and we're gonna take my favorite paper clay and we're going to create a few little accents to attach onto our note. My Amazon affiliate link is down in the description box. It does have the paper clay. This is my favorite clay to use. Feel free to use whatever makes you fuzzy inside. I just personally like this clay. I struggle with hand grip strength. It's super easy to mold even after it's set for a little bit and I can sand this down. So I really like using it even on furniture pieces. The me in the video wasn't sure what pieces I wanted to use, so I just made a bunch. Here are the three napkins that we're gonna be pulling different sections from. In case you can't tell, I wanted to kind of keep the green <laughs> as the one color that kind of tied everything together. And full disclosure, people, okay, it took me about six hours to create this piece. I know, I know what you're thinking, but if you love decoupage, it's a good idea. First up, I'm gonna start with any sections I want painted, and we're gonna use these grays on the beard. I'm also gonna take some black as well and put in those little deep sections to give us a little bit more depth in it. And obviously paint your beard on your gnome, whatever color you want, or don't paint any sections. If you wanna decoupage your whole piece, you go right ahead. This was just the design that I had thought out and kind of sketched before I started to do this piece. And people, just a little tip, it has been my experience that if you do wanna paint something, paint it first, decoupage, and then you can go back and touch up. If I decoupage and then paint, I tend to make more of a mess and sometimes ruin sections that I decoupage and you really can't go back over that and fix it. But you know, you do what you want to do. I'm just giving you my opinion. I took a couple different tan colors to paint the little nose and our hands and then I went in with some shading Nothing too fancy schmancy, just, you know, to add a little bit of depth with those pieces. And then I had to come back in with some of that gray and touch up around the edges of our little tan paint because that made a little bit of a mess. Since part of this video is me trying to get as many projects as I could in one day, I had to be very purposeful 
with creating this and allowing things to dry, especially because I knew this was going to take me almost all day. I spent some time ripping up the napkin and trying to put little sections because I know I wasn't going to be able to just do this in one piece. There were too many curves going on. So I was purposeful with tearing up little sections to make sure I had designs of the napkin so I didn't like just rip sunflowers in half and then you couldn't see a whole piece. I decided not to paint the bird and the trim around the gnome. I was not sure what colors would go really well once I had the napkins on here and I didn't want to just paint them colors, get the napkins on here, and then have the colors not make sense. So I just decided to wait. And if I'm being honest about that, I was kind of nervous because I did not want to mess up the decoupage with the paint once I had it all done. So tips for decoupaging something that is not completely flat. You're going to most likely need to tear your napkin as you're applying your piece. You can wrap it gently, press it down gently, and also use the cling wrap to help reduce the wrinkles. But be mindful as you're pulling the cling wrap around whatever type of curves you have, because if it's super wet, that cling wrap is just going to rip your piece and move it as you're moving the cling wrap along. I always try to use really thin layers of Mod Podge and go little by little, as you can see. It took me a long, long time just to do this little cap right here. And then once I had the largest piece on right in the front, so this way the bulk of the design was right there, I started piecing the smaller sections that I had torn out in the back so it looked like one piece. And people, don't be afraid of any excess overhang. See how like around the rim there's extra napkin? I don't have any Mod Podge there. So that means that the part of the napkin that's sitting there, it's not going to stick there at the end of the day. We're going to go back and clean all this up. I'm going to show you in just a couple minutes. And right here, my friends, is one of the reasons I love using fan brushes. You can have a little bit of Mod Podge on that and go around all the edges. It peels them back just so gently, and then you can plop a little bit right there and gently fold the napkin right on over. It seals those edges up super tight, especially whenever you're doing a little piece project like this one. Once that cap was dry, it was time to move on to a little gnome booty. And we needed to lather that sucker on up with a nice amount of Mod Podge. <laughs> All up in that crease from top to bottom. And I did that actually from the neck down. This way we could put the bulk of our napkin right on the biggest piece of real estate <laughs> that we had. I'm so sorry. Right on the biggest piece of real estate we had back there. So we could just piece together around the sides. And I made sure to do my due diligence. <laughs> Let's press it up in there so we got a nice wedgie. I'm sorry. Okay, now moving on. I love this napkin, but we're only going to be using the green part for our shoes. I want it to keep the little gold piece at the very bottom of our gnome shoe and then have the design take over kind of the entire top. This was the most time consuming you would think that the arms were, but oh no these shoes were and mostly because I had to really go around the beard and do this tiny section by tiny section keeping the gold piece aligned with the actual sole of the bottom of the shoe and you'll notice I don't have my fan brush in here I have a tiny synthetic brush that I'm using it's still the bristles are super soft just like the fan brush that I use and it's also tiny enough for me to get in these little places that we have to <laughs> kind of push the napkin in here. I did an entire row of this and then came back in and pieced little sections of the prints on the top of the shoe. When all those sections dried before I started the sleeves, I'm like, let's take a little clay tool. Well, I used a couple really with a little bit of water on a paintbrush and go around our edges. So I just went and took that water around the edges. So once the Mod Pod stopped, then the napkin was just hanging there. This allowed me to take those clay tools, get in those creases and pull off any excess napkin where the paint began or the next section began. 
And before I put the sleeves on, I wanted to do this. So this way the sleeves actually overlapped the flower prints and met up with the beard. I hope that makes sense. This is extremely time consuming. So prepare yourself if you go to do a project like this. This is probably going to take you the largest amount of time. And mostly because even though you're separating this with the water, sometimes the napkin can bunch in little sections and you really got to make sure you adjust for that even though there's no Mod Podge. There's like little napkin ball pieces you want to smooth out before you carry on to apply your next layer or to put your sealer over or do your paint. For the sleeves, I kind of did the same thing I did with the boutte area. <laughs> and I took a big section over the largest part of the arm and then pieced together the smaller sections around the sides. I was so happy when I got to this point because as you can imagine, <laughs> you're letting this dry, you're working on it, you're letting it dry. And then it's like you're starting to put the finishing touches on it, coming in, fixing the paint, adjusting to where the decoupage ends. And it just really started coming alive for me at this point. And it was also about this time that I realized what colors I was going to do the trim and our little Tweety Bird, which I decided on a deep brown for the trim and a little yellow for our bird. I painted up off camera our little clay pieces that we had molded and I used tacky glue to attach them. And because I can't leave well enough alone, I decided to take some gold gilding wax by Dixie Bell and go over our bird and our trim. Dollar Tree had these cute little Halloween book themed porcelain pieces and I grabbed this sucker because I felt like I could use it for anything because the only thing really Halloween-y on it was a little bat above the center section and I'm like nobody's gonna notice that unless I let them notice it. So let's bring in our beautiful napkin that we're going to use to decoupage this piece. I love this napkin and the gold background on it's so pretty. People if you want to skip this next part go right ahead. It looks fine honestly without being painted but I wanted the pages to actually give the illusion that they were pages so I just took a couple of different paint colors and went ahead and dry brushed in a couple little sections to give us that look. I've painted ceramic or porcelain before, whichever you want to call it, and I've never really noticed how absorbent, I guess, porous <laughs> this stuff actually is. I really wanted to decoupage the entire book, have the napkin kind of wrapped around that joint, and just have the little ornate area where it's like a label showing through. So I grabbed me a little paintbrush and some water and I'm like I'm just going to trace around it where I feel it with my fingers and then take my nail or a little clay tool and just pull the napkin up like I do all the flipping time. However, it started absorbing right to the piece. Didn't matter how much water I was putting on this napkin. It was like the piece right behind was like I got this water. <laughs> sucked it right on up. The napkin was like not getting wet at all. So this is where the skills that I have acquired over a long period of time of winging things comes into play. I just decide to make the best of a bad situation, take that water, take the napkin off of our little piece and trace around what I felt was going to be the spot that our little label was going to be in. And lo and behold, I kind of nailed it. I kind of nailed it. At this point, I was definitely worried about the Mod Podge situation and knowing I had to decoupage this napkin on here, wondering if since it was absorbing the water, was it going to do the same thing with the Mod Podge? So I was like, you know what? Against my normal less is more, I'm going to use a whole bunch and pray. And that's exactly what I did. I lathered the piece all on up and then just tapity tap tap tapped with my finger all around. Once I felt like there was a secure enough hold, I grabbed the sponge and started pressing down 
because there was a ton of Mod Podge seeping through this joint. And trust me when I'm telling you, it was drying super fast. I could not even believe it. I'm like, let me hurry up and grab the cling wrap because I want those little ornate designs to pop out through the napkin when I try to put my accent on there. But best believe if I didn't take that sponge first to grab some of that extra Mod Podge, this cling wrap would have probably been tearing this napkin to shreds. As I wrap the napkin around the spine, repeating the whole put a lot of Mod Podge on there process, I realized that the napkin was gonna have like this gap on the back of the book. So I did end up taking a little section of the napkin out and then just matching up the extra napkin on the back so the pattern just made sense. Once this dried, which literally took minutes, I'm, this might be one of the fastest drying <laughs> projects I've ever done, to be honest with you. I went around trimming off our excess napkin. I decided to just put a nice simple label on the front of our book here, picked a design from one of our stamps and pressed it right down in where that label section is that gave us all the trouble. Then I grabbed out my Dixie Belle gilding wax, put a little bit on my finger and went around all those raised sections in our book so that way they popped out. If you don't have this stuff, rub and buff or some glittery paint will give you a very similar effect. <laughs> In a recent browse in Walmart, I came across these adorable little farmhouse pieces in their wood slice section, I like to call it. I've definitely decoupaged pieces like this before, but I wanted to kind of create a set. So if you wanted to grab several different pieces kind of of the same style, you could set them on a shelf or set them in one section of your house and it would help just enhance your decor. And I didn't wanna just decoupage the entire piece on these since we had some little sections that kind of popped out. I wanted to do something different. And we're gonna start off just kind of painting everything white. So this way we can have that background pop out with this gorgeous napkin. I let all the pieces dry up really well and then took the napkin. I actually needed two of the napkins for this project. For this pig, I went and applied the napkin over the whole top section. I left two of the legs white, the ear white, and the little tail white. I applied the same method with the other two little wood pieces, just taking sections of the napkin and putting it on little raised sections of our wood cutout here, a little wood slice. So this way, all three of the pieces had the white, paint and they had the napkin they just had it in different sections so if you want to put them like i said on a shelf or if you want to put them in the same area of the house they're going to match and just kind of bring out little pops of design in your home i know what you're thinking brandy what if i do not want to use white as my background well then use black as your background or brown or green but the part where you want to put your napkin on paint that sucker white let that dry, apply your Mod Podge, and then put your napkin on. This is going to help keep your background color, whatever you want that, as well as bring the pops of color out of your napkin that you're attaching onto your piece. All right, people, let's recap. For this video, I wanted to see how many pieces I could decoupage in just one day, giving you guys some new ideas on creating decoupage art with some odd pieces you don't see decoupaged every day. I started at 8.30 in the morning and ended shortly after 7 p.m. in the evening. 
taking just a small break throughout the day. And I alternated these pieces, not that you could tell with the way I filmed it, letting them dry and rotating, working on them throughout the video. So people humor me, if you will, and tell me how many pieces do you think I decoupaged today? There were a total of five projects, but our last one had three pieces giving me a total of seven pieces. I personally think I did seven. However, some of you may feel like that last one was just one idea, making it a total of five. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today and until next time.